in the night of Hong Kong Kung Fu Cinema with Craig Reed. And I was just going to read you his little bio. Um, Craig was the first Caucasian stuntman actor in Chinese Kung Fu movies in 1979. He lectured on combat choreography at Yale School of Drama and was Sam Raimi's spy chore choreographer and, um, on Spy Game and fight directing apprentice on CBS's Martial Law. Um, Reed was the screenwriter on the award-winning film Red Trousers, The Life of the Hong Kong Stuntman, and is a freelance journalist writing on Asian, um, Asian martial arts cinema. So he's going to be giving a little bit of an intro tonight to each of the films. And um, just a few logistics before I bring him up here. Um, the restrooms are just past the elevators to your right or left. And um, we're also going to have a few latecomers, I think, so um, when they open the door, we'll just kind of sneak them in quietly and um, get them to see. And if you can all turn off your cell phones and be with us in the present, <coughs> that would be fantastic. And uh, just one last plug was where our next event um, is on March 13th. It's called Musically Speaking with Callie Nikitas and Rich Sheldon. And they're going to be discussing the art of the record album cover. And there's also going to be a little mini vinyl record convention with all these vendors that will be coming. So if there's any of those favorite 78s you want, um, you'll be able to come probably search through and find those. So please welcome Craig Reed. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here tonight and to be invited back to Otis College to present these two fantastic movies. I recognize some of you that were here at uh, the talk we did about three weeks ago at, uh, in front of the, the pictures. Tonight's films are just so awesome. And from what I understand, they are in Chinese, which is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> because if you've ever seen those badly dubbed films, that was my first job back in the 1970s in the Chinese film industry. So you won't have to worry about listening to someone going, <laughs> You're going to die, I'll say. But still, I think my Kung Fu is better than yours. <laughs> uh, it's, if the voice sounds familiar, it's probably because it is, because uh, I did about 60 films in 30 days in Singapore. <laughs> we, we had the same four or five people doing the movies, and we ran out of the voice after the second film because none of us are actors. So we would end up uh, just having the good guy voice, the bad guy voice, you know, the real... Yeah, I will here to help you, sir. Kind of voice. <laughs> <laughs> and now and then the, uh, the, the female voice, and you can always tell mine because I sound like Monty Python. Hey, you're going to die! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we had an Australian guy once who said, All right, Mike, you're going to get yours right now, Mike. <laughs> You know, when you see the Chinese heroes standing like that, going, good eye, Mike, you know. <laughs> That's what they were, they were fantastic films. But um, I saw the first five minutes of the first movie tonight, and I was blown over, because I haven't seen this film since, like, 1979, and that was the original 35 millimeter print. But this is so fantastic, I'm so psyched, I'm shaking all over, because I can't wait to get this film started. But I have to talk for a couple minutes to, you know, to get you all ready. It's not a comedy, so you won't be laughing once the film starts. <laughs> But um, The 36th Chamber of Shaolin is a classic Kung Fu film from 1978. And how this film was devised is the director, and his name is Liu Jia Liang, to me, he's probably one of the best film directors, martial art film directors in the history of martial arts. He actually is a very legitimate martial artist, and he started off in film as a martial arts instructor. Back in the 70s, they weren't called fight directors or fight choreographers, they were called the martial arts instructors. And he is the first martial arts instructor to make the jump into directing. And so I think he's one of the best. Because also, not only was he interested in, in talking about family in his films, family as real family as well as his martial arts family, he was also into exploring authentic martial art technique, authentic martial art training. And of course, what was important to him was martial art virtue. And this is a very important concept because the film we're going to see tonight the first one, 36 Chambers of Shaolin, is about a famous Shaolin monk named Sander. Mm. Now this is a true monk that existed back in the early, excuse me, mid Qing dynasty, and he was a member of what is called the Ten Tigers of Shaolin. And these were Chinese heroes that after the Zhongyin Shan Temple was burned down, these guys went out and they started teaching martial arts to the, to the layperson. 
getting excited. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> so can you tell my God, I'm so, I want to talk faster so I can get to the movie. <laughs> so anyway, so Mok Sander is a very important person in martial art history. And Sander is translated in Mandarin as free vir virtues. So how did this film come about? After a movie was being filmed by Liu Jialiang, at the time he was a fight director, 1976, Challenge of the Masters. He was coming home after a late night of filming and he saw a waterfall. The waterfall was falling onto a large round rock. And when the water hit the rock, it produced a halo. And to Liu Jialiang, that, that halo represented a Shaolin monk practicing in the rain. This is what inspired him to write this character. So, who did he cast? He casted his step, excuse me, his kung fu brother, Gordon Liu. Now, some of you may know Gordon Liu from the Kill, the Kill Bill game, the martial arts films. Uh, the white-haired priest that taught him the sermon how to fight. He was also one of the bodyguards, uh, Lucy Liu's bodyguards, in the, the big fight scene in the Japanese restaurant. But why did he pick Gordon Liu? Three reasons. Gordon Liu was a good student. Gordon Liu was obedient. And thirdly, Gordon Liu had a good attitude about his training and in life. In other words, he had three good virtues. He's the perfect man to play thunder, which means three virtues. So after the film, uh, I'll, I'll say a few questions, you know, I'll say a few comments about the movies. Something will hit me probably as I'm watching the thing because it's been so long. And I'll try to be calm. <laughs> okay, so let's roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs>